Hi, it's Yvonne. It's time for the haul video from the last Thrift With Me sourcing trip. We went to the Goodwill. Um, that was a fun trip. That's where we found out what the new manager did with the kids section. Anyways, let's do this. Let's take a deeper look at what I decided to buy, some things I put back, um, and I'll tell you what I found out about them and what I think they'll sell for, what I'm going to try, what I'm going to start out as. Okay. Hey, let's do clothing first, okay? So if you're not into clothing, you can just fast forward a little bit. When I get done and edit this, I'll put it down in the description somewhere what timestamp to start at if you just absolutely don't want to do clothes. But I've got a few pieces and clothing makes money. Um, most of my sales are clothing. I'm just now kind of expanding my hard goods again, right? So, Michael Kors purse. Oh my gosh. Yes, it was $10.99. I mean, $9.99, but um, I felt okay with that because it is Oh, dang it, I forgot the little horses were in here. <laughs> I take my own Ikea bag to the store and some things to pack my breakables. I don't let the cashiers touch my breakables, my money makers. Um, you'll hear plenty of stories of cashiers just like was mad at how big my cart was of stuff they had to wrap or they just mishandled it. They were rough with it and broke it. So like they don't even get to scan it. Like stuff like this, I'm like, I'm going to scan it. Boop. <laughs> Boop. And then like I bring my own stuff and I handle it myself. I'm sorry, but you know, they're my money makers. Okay. Anyways, back to this. <clears throat> so still knew what someone probably donated this one was because it's missing the shoulder strap but that's okay this is perfect condition besides that it is the mercer in white pebble stone leather michael kors i would expect to get about 60 to 70 dollars for this um, I may go ahead and buy a unique strap because that's kind of the trend anyways, and they're really affordable overseas um, on eBay. I buy them for my own purses. Um, I don't often find a good condition Michael Kors. Maybe I found about five or six of them in the last couple years. One of them I'm using now. I kept for myself. I switched the strap like I said. Hi. Hi, hi. Kissy. <laughs> my husband's home for lunch. That was Steve. Okay. So, um, if one of my daughters doesn't take this, right? <laughs> so, again, if you find bags like this, um, Michael Kors shoes, purses do better than shoes, clothing, mm, be careful, okay? Oh, so, I'm excited about that. And this looks like a custom-made little vest. Um, this is going to be good for some of the subcultures that I cater to, um, Scarborough Fair, Renaissance, Steampunk, things like that. Um, it was $5.99. It's in great shape. Look at that pretty fabric, right? And because of the lacing on the sides, the front and the back, that's going to make it um, fit a wider range of people, right? And I like that. I like my clothing either to be somewhat stretchy or, you know, something like this to where it fits, it's like slightly adjustable. It just keeps down on returns. It's just an easier sell. Um, I don't like to do things that are tightly fitted um, to sell online unless it's like really sought after or, a, or a, you know, a really high-end brand name because it's risky. Okay. Oh my gosh. I cannot tell you how many of these hand-painted mass produced though mass produced t-shirts that i sold in the 80s and 90s when i was in dallas texas at the indoor flea markets at a brick and mortar store these were all the rage who remembers these oh my gosh let me come up closer do you remember these from the 80s and 90s all blinged out gold was predominant then um and it usually had like stretchy lounge pajama like pants with it um, this one has the shoulder pads. A couple of companies 
would do this also and they were a little better quality. I think I mentioned that in a couple of videos back. Um, Risky was one of them. Anyways, <laughs> they would have all kinds of stuff on it. This was half price for $2.50. This one happens to say San Francisco. So I'm, this is super retro. I'm going to price this a little higher than just your average t-shirt. I'm going to wait for the right person that goes, oh my gosh, I remember those. Or maybe a movie prop company, right? Let me show you again, okay? With some of the foil and then the glitter overlay and then some of the studs. Oh my gosh. I wore these. I'll tell you something else, a little history. Early 80s, I'm in my 20s. This is kind of how I got started. I would, when this was the trend, and I'm artsy, right? I would buy t-shirts real cheap and all this glitter paint and stuff, and I would do these myself. My best seller was a custom Dallas skyline that I did, because Dallas has a unique skyline. I don't know if you've ever noticed that with the green building, with the crisscross, and then um, the this, this satellite. The, what was it called? It's been 20 years like, since I left Dallas. You know, the round thing that has the restaurant on it. Anyways, it has a unique, iconic skyline like a lot of our cities do. And so I made a really pretty one and um, I ended up having to make a, t a like a template, like hand carved a template because I was selling them so fast. That's how I actually got started. Someone said, hey, I'll give you one wall in my indoor, indoor only flea market store if you manage this whole store. Okay, one thing led to another. We ended up getting married <laughs> and we ended up with nine stores and a couple brick and mortars. Anyways, <laughs> okay, so probably about $30 on that. All right, Vocal. Vocal is very popular. They did a lot of bling. They're starting to tone it down because that's the trend. Tone it down a little. Like Think Miss Me and Rock Revival. Like the small store, the buckle, that crowd. That collegiate young person, high school collegiate crowd. Um, they're starting to tone it down a little bit. So vocals following suit as well. But someone is definitely going to love this. Because of the better label, Vocal Made in USA, I paid $5.99. And I'll probably get about $30 to $35 for this. It will go on eBay and Poshmark. Okay? So easy with the bling, but don't discount it totally. And, yay, this paid for most everything, probably. Another pair of St. John Sport um, pants. St. John, okay, for those of you that are trying to do clothing more, learn more about clothing, not St. John's Bay. No, no, no. St. John. It's a higher-end designer. There's a hierarchy to their labels. Just make a note. Look it up if you're not familiar. Um, if you've been in the community for a while, you know Saint, to look for St. John. So this is St. John's Sport, a nice pair of pants. Um, I did sell those blue ones from last month. I got $40 for those. And I listed some more St. John just the other day. St. John, just do your homework on that because you're going to appreciate it because it does end up at the thrift store, surprisingly enough. Um, and some Olympic Ralph Lauren. So I like Olympic stuff. And, of course, when it's with Ralph Lauren, who was an official uh, retailer, designer for a lot of Olympic stuff, um, these cargo shorts should do pretty well. They've got the big pony and the Olympic. So, that's that. Okay, on to the good stuff. Oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start with some of these hard goods. It was a really fun trip. Well, I think all my trips are fun. Sorry, they're just all fun. I always find something. Even though the Goodwill is upping the prices, I know there are still things to be found. So, um, dang, I snuck something in here too. Oh, salt and pepper shakers okay my packing skills my ninja packing skills okay another frank lloyd wright item um you saw i picked up a mug guggenheim collection collab so i found this in the canister it was 349 and from the art institute of chicago let me come, bring this in for you guys so another collab Probably museum souvenir piece, possibly. 
So architecture stuff like this sells well. With this, I think I should be able to get somewhere between 25 to 35. Okay, it's in great shape. Nothing is wrong with this at all. So what was inside? I've got a little fetish for salt and pepper shakers, although they don't always bring a lot of money, but I just, I don't know what it is. Um, but this is Shamu, the killer whale, Sea World. So this is kind of iconic and it's got some controversial history behind it. So little souvenir piece, 99 cents. So Sea World, Shamu, the killer whale. Um, probably about 10 to $15, but I just, I know I break my $20 rule, but sometimes again, nostalgia, um, I just want to mark something off my reseller bucket list, whatever. Um, it's, it's okay to have some lower priced items in your store that move more quickly. You know, keep your store active. Okay. More iconic pieces. Um, New York, little laser engraved New York souvenirs. The reason I picked these up is they still have the Twin Towers, okay? Just like I picked up the globe, the 9-11 globe. I'm not going to let something like that end up trashed. And so New York City with the Twin Towers. Some people, this hurts them, and some people are just kind of, they take it as a memorial. So I bought these two. I don't, this is probably... Yeah, that's going to be hard. Hang on. Hang on. Let's try this. Okay, let's try this. Okay, well, it's prettier than it's coming across, okay? It's laser engraved inside. It's got some nice little prism colors to it every once in a while. And I got two of them. Oh, maybe this one will show some of them. See how it's got a little bit of like rainbow prism color. So anyways, they're both kind of the same. 99 cents, 99 cents. I'm not sure of the price. I'll probably put like 15 and 20 and just wait. Okay, just wait. I don't care sometimes if someone else sold something for $5 that I think is worth 15 or 20. I will wait my turn or perhaps um, they're not an experienced seller. Perhaps they're sick of it and going out of business. Uh, maybe it had a flaw, okay, that unless you open up the listing and really look, you're not going to know that. These are perfect. I will do my thing, right? Love this. <laughs> um, I forgot who this was by. Hang on. I forgot already. Because I want to talk about this. Oh, upside down. No wonder I can't. Park Sherman. These are so hard. Park Sherman Division. Ketchum and McDougal Incorporated Man. You no. From USA, but made in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is usually a clue that something is vintage, retro or vintage. Um, but also, you know, this with the... <laughs> right? So, now listen. This is probably only worth about $15 or so. But very mid-century modern, right? Very like Mad Men. But a lot of their products sell for more, okay? Like office stuff. Very mid-century modern. So... If you're interested in that, there's another name you can jot down to check out. I paid 99 cents. It's adorable. Um, but I want to tell you something. If you ever find the clocks, like the radio clocks that do this, okay, not the LED that do this, check it out because those do have significant resale value. Definitely. Um, especially movie prop people. Definitely. Like theatrical prop people. Anyways, don't you just love this? I might keep this. <laughs> Okay, um, the horses. Oh, easy girl. Okay, so the horses, um, these kind of vintagey figurines sell, especially the little tiny ones I've learned. But even though these are a little bit bigger than the miniature miniatures, these are um, horses. So there are certain things that I feel comfortable, I'm talking about myself, that I feel comfortable for resale. Um, I'm kind of new at this type of stuff. As you guys know, I'm taking a deeper dive into vintage. Um, but I learned a lot about my little vintage um, Siamese cats. Very, I mean, min, very miniature. And I think Renan Henniger was the name on that. I'll pop that up too. Anyways, these are Pal War, I found out. it was. I did a little search on Google Lens. I had to kind of tinker with the... Wait a minute, let me get this up there. 
Okay, so the label's missing. I don't know if you can see that. So I had to just kind of take the alphabet that was on here and just like keep Googling it with different letters put in that I thought made sense until Google's recommendations said, oh, I think this is what you're looking for. And yeah, okay, it was. So Pal Mar. Um, I paid $249 and $199. Super cute. I'm going to sell them probably as a pair. I'll try that first. Probably like $20, $25. Try that first. I'm pretty sure these are porcelain. I will figure that out for sure before I say that in a listing. <clears throat> oh my gosh, this. Okay, let's do this first though. I haven't cleaned this yet. Jack Daniels decanter. <clears throat> Some of these have good resale value. I didn't even try to open this. It's got a cork. Okay. And this one has some kind of special dedication band. So I'm going to look that up too and see if that adds any value. Some kind of tournament or something. But this one I paid $2.99. And oh, you can't see the, you can't see the engraving, can you? Okay. It's etched engraving. Some kind of band. So it was special dedication. Someone bought this for something or a prize. This one has a name. I already found it. I'll throw it up there. It has a name for this style and what year I found out. I think this these are going for around $30, $35. So we'll see. But some things are like way up there. So I always look at the liquor stuff. I think I've mentioned before, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I've sold some good liquor decanters and like the boxes that champagne or wine, you know, high-end liqueurs or whatever come in. Sometimes those have great resale value. I've sold them up to like $80. So I always look at that kind of stuff. Okay. Oh, uh, let's do this real quick before we get to this really some money makers here. This is not old, but it caught my attention because of, you know, it's got the like the vintage jewelry. Super cute, right? So I went ahead and bought it anyways. $2.99. It's new, but look, I just like that. It's really cute. If one of my daughters doesn't want it, I'll put it up for, I don't know, $15, $20 and take a decent best offer. But can you guys really see how... That's really cute. Okay. So there I went with that. A couple more things before we talk about these, this money maker thing here that I'm really excited about. And I learned something new again from a couple of the forums I joined. Oh my gosh. Facebook forums are the best. I know Instagram is all the rage with the younger people and some of us older people have migrated over there. But my opinion, Facebook is now halfway through of ruining Instagram with all the ads and the throttling. I know most social media places do that. You know, that's their business. They're trying to make money too, right? Anyways, Facebook groups are really, in my opinion, better for learning. Let me grab a couple more things to show you. Okay. Oh my gosh. I better put this here more things okay so this is my first l e smith um depression glass i think i can say depression glass on this i think i learned that's right and this is amethyst looks like it looks black but it's called amethyst and it's from the mount pleasant series i learned that from scott's curiosity shop on youtube so um, this one, I think probably about $15 or so. No one really has, like, there are a lot of pieces for sale on eBay. Nobody has this exact bowl. So maybe it's a more rare piece. Maybe it was a limit, more limited run. And somebody might be like, I don't have that in my set. So I don't know. If not, I love the Art Deco kind of look of it and you know the black looking glass um so i'm okay to keep it so l e smith i learned amethyst even though it looks black depression glass 
Mount Pleasant series. Okay. Milk glass. I talked about milk glass in the thrift with me. I know your typical milk glass is not doesn't have a large resale value unless it's really interesting or an interesting like piece. But like I mentioned, don't discount your generic I'm using that term loosely, your average or typical little milk glass bases and things like that. Only if they're cheap enough. I mean like really, really cheap. Because if you bundle them together, you do have a chance of selling them as a lot for someone who's um, doing a wedding decoration. Like, and I showed like some pictures and some information to kind of lead you in the right direction of that. That is a thing. Anyways, this was in there and I noticed this isn't your typical little cheap milk glass. This had the unique tips. So I, this is probably not going to show. Okay. I don't think that's going to show. Yeah, maybe a little bit. If you can tell, just a different quality glass. The little tips had that moon glass glow or whatever. $249. I said, this looks like that plate that I bought that I learned the group helped. One of my groups that I joined helped me with. That turned out to be a Fostoria. They're like, why didn't you get it? And I'm like, I don't know what my problem is. It was only $2.49. Well, let me go back and get it. Thank goodness it was still there. <laughs> so I love it. If it doesn't sell, I priced it up a few dollars higher. If it doesn't sell, I do not care because I like it. So <laughs> I was right. This is also a Fostoria from the um, Heirloom Collection. Little bud base. So this will go for more than just like a little cheap milk glass base. Okay. You can just tell the quality. So believe me, I'm just now taking a deeper dive into vintage stuff. Okay. Um, and I've learned all of this. Hi, sweetie. I'll see you after work. I love you. So I've learned all this in like eight weeks. So because I took it serious, I joined the proper groups. I'm watching um, interesting people on YouTube and I'm learning a lot very quickly. So don't if if you were leery of it like I was, don't be. It's really not that hard to start learning. And very quickly, you, I'm getting an eye for it. And so I think you will too. And it's really increasing my sales. And the thing is, especially on the glass, like I love art glass. I have that anyways. Just not too, you know, never mind. Okay, let me stay back on track. <clears throat> when it comes to like the vintage quality glass stuff, I'm learning I don't really have to be too afraid because it's quality. It's a little bit heavier and more quality thicker. So, you know, shipping, it's not really quite as scary, right? Um, I do set, stay away though from some of the more fragile stuff. I mean, some of it is fragile and I am leery of that unless it's really, you know, high dollar. Okay. So <laughs> a Hello Kitty light switch. Okay. What's up with that, Yvonne? <laughs> well, this one's a little bit more unique. Um, this one's a little bit more um, old school because this has actually been around for a long time, um, this character. And this one is the glitter, like, enameled, so and it's on metal. So this one has a little bit more resale value. Um, it has more of an 80s, late 80s, 90s vibe. I bet you someone in my household steal or that comes over to visit me steals this one from me too. We'll see if it makes it for sale. That was nostalgic for me. So, okay. This is modern. This is called Fred and Things. Mug life, I'm still about it. Don't let anybody give you a hard time if you still want to sell mugs. I think I mentioned that last time. I know I did and I'm going to keep mentioning it. And my friend Thelma Thrift, synchronistic synchronous whatever synchronize we had the same wavelength last week we were both talking about quit picking on people from wanting to sell mugs a lot of people that's their entry like that's their gateway you know <laughs> into reselling mugs or t-shirts and there are still some mugs to be found that you know have some resale value and once you learn some tricks about shipping like the FOMO method that who came up with that um, a lady named Sue did years and years ago, and then Jason T. Smith, who was a little more popular, kind of took off with it, and he 
And so he taught a lot more people about that method. And, you know, that's where that FOMO method came from. But um, it's been around for a while from someone named Sue. What? I can't remember her, what she, where she's at now or what she's doing, but um, it's on YouTube. Anyways, you don't have to be afraid of it. It's a little tiny box and you put it in a priority um, flat rate so you can ship a mug for whatever our discount prices we get commercial base what is it like 720 or 730 now if you buy through ebay talking about ebay <clears throat> okay so anyways back to this this is new but this is kind of a popular one see it's got like a diamond ring <laughs> so these if you can have it new in the box they sell for about 15 or so um i just thought it was adorable so i'm gonna just add it to the queue i paid a dollar fifty if it doesn't sell it's adorable I'll just add it to my cute mugs. I don't really have a big matching set of mugs. I might have some that have two, two like from a casino or something, but I enjoy different mugs for different moods. And I enjoy if company comes over, everybody picks out a mug that hits them for that day. And um, I think the only thing I have multiples of are my smiley, my smiley face mugs that I pick up, which are really like Teleflora, an FTD flower arrangement things. Um, I've already ranted about that. Hashtag save the smileys. Anyways, I give them out to all my friends and family. And then I have a bunch of them if we want to do that. Okay, this was interesting. Um, Maddox of California. So that was a new one for me. This had a very um, mid-century modern almost hollywood regency leaning vibe to me it seems to be some i paid half price it seems to be some kind of like wall sconce base or i don't know someone will figure out what to do with it you could do a lot of things put utensils in it put makeup brushes it could go in so many different rooms of the house right it's adorable um if it was silver if this was silver it wouldn't even be for sale i would keep it but maddox of california um, it is vintagey. I'm not sure of the resale value. I'm probably, I'm going to recheck it because this is new, a new name for me, probably because of its severe cuteness. I will, <laughs> and utilitarian, like it's just got so much going for it. I will probably put this up for about 25 and if no one wants to pay me 25 I'm going to keep it. I'll make this silver and I will keep this. Super cute right so many things you could do with this maddox of california excited about that little thing okay we're breezing through this just a few more things glass grapes i would pick them up i remember my mom having some big purple ones these are not glass and the handle looked a little cheap and wonky but i picked them up anyways because I'm like, this looks like some kind of marble or alabaster. So I'm glad I picked them up because as it turns out, this these are above average quality. I paid $1.99. Yes. This weird looking handle is misleading because this is Jim. I'm not, I don't know. I read things. I've never heard anybody say this. Terenia. I'm Okay, I'm just going to put the picture up somewhere, okay? I'm going to put the picture up. And his stuff, some of his stuff is crazy value. Three, four, five, a thousand dollars. These grapes probably around 35 to 40. I will add them to the queue. Um, I saw some that sold a little cheaper, but I don't care. Some people just don't really know what they have. And again, because um, the sticker was missing. But Google Lens recognized this shape of um the vine immediately and and it was it came right up so pretty excited about these now this some nice art glass i like this kind of stuff um you know more clean design um 12.99 i felt comfortable because i put it in my cart i went to the front of the goodwill because i wasn't getting good reception so i couldn't really use my google lens or do the search on it and i really didn't even notice but i at first but then in the light i could see it was had a name etched but i couldn't really get good reception but 
I got into Facebook. So real quick, in one of my fav new favorite groups for vintage identification, I threw it up there and people helped me with it. It is Dom and France. Please look that up. Here's the name. Dom and France. Um, oh my gosh, their stuff is very collectible, very valuable. This particular piece, one sold for like <clears throat> $6 or something. And the person in the group that had experience said, I wouldn't even pay attention to that. Again, that's probably someone who didn't realize what they had. And when I looked at it, it was also a smaller version of this, like a five inch version. Okay. So this one I think should be worth around 50 or 60. I need to look into this a little bit more because again, you don't always want to just go by what other people are pricing things. Some people price things too high. Some people price them too low. They don't know. I'm going to do more research. I'm going to clean it up and assess the condition of this and um, we'll see what happens but please if you're new like me this is a name dom and france and then there's some more history about that name i think they worked with other people anyways here there was the name look it up for yourself and teach yourself about it like i'm going to and shout out to that group old things drifters and pickers um because they quickly helped me with that. So I didn't leave it behind. I went ahead and coughed up the $12.99. Okay. And then, but this is one they couldn't help me with. <laughs> there are no markings on this most awesome lamp. This, you could just tell the quality. You could tell the crystal. This has some lead crystal in it. You could just tell the quality. Now it seems to have a more modern fixture in it. Not super modern, but more modern. And I, someone said that to me, and I agree totally. It could have been rewired. Who knows? It has kind of a Waterford glass kind of vibe to it. But I've extensively looked on, um, on the Internet, and I've seen nothing even close. So I'm going to have to discount that. It is awesome, though. I paid it was half price. Nobody else wanted it. It made it to the half price sale. So it was six fifty, twelve ninety nine to six fifty. So I'm going to keep working on this. And if not, I absolutely adore this anyways. So look how beautiful can you, I hope this comes across at just how beautiful this is. Like seriously, little, um, even little glass, you know, um, what do you call those? sitter things <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay all right you guys so i oh wait a minute oh, man, i forgot i picked up this i love this lamp i picked this up finally been there and been there and been there nobody wanted it why it's cute i i haven't looked it up yet i think it's just an anchor hawking here maybe someone already knows by that pattern is that just an anchor hawking i'm not sure but the gold trim on it was still in great shape. It's adorable. I'm like, okay, nobody else wants you. I will take you and use you. If it doesn't sell, I will use you. It's probably, what, $15 or so. I don't know yet for sure. But because the gold trimming is perfect. It's real thick and heavy and perfect. Can you see that? So I saved it. And this here, $249. I did find this. This is Anchor Hawking with the little gold. I thought that was unique. There's quite a few on there. So this ashtray or whatever we're going to use it for now these days, it looks like its value is somewhere around 25 to 30 So... I'll clean it up. It, mine's perfect. I'll clean it up and add it to the queue. I'll let you look at it one more time. It's real heavy. Okay. Now we're almost done. Two more things. So this is interesting. Okay, so I got, there were a bunch of Barbie magazines. <clears throat> and I'll pick up a few if they look super interesting. Um, I picked up this one, but it's going to be for myself. This is um, a special collector's reference edition and very old 
And the reason I picked it up is because it especially tackles. So I just sold a night a Barbie number five for $75 and it was really hard to differentiate between um, four and five and six so this had a really good reference page on that a little bit better than things I found on the internet as a matter of fact I may copy this if it's okay I don't know how old this is it might be okay to copy it if I just give them credit I don't know I'll work that out and put this and add this online for people for reference because it's really hard um, on certain especially the four five and six to kind of tell and you need to know because there's a price difference between if like mine ended up being a five but if it would have been a four it have been a hundred and some dollars instead of 75 not that I'm complaining I'm just telling you so you know 75 is still good for what I think it was like 99 cents okay um if you're if you don't like nude art close your eyes so some pretty interesting magazines um these are called black and white artsy magazine there are some celebrities in both of these with okay yeah I can't show you um a lot of topless no like hustler type just like topless artsy and believe me this is gonna sell <laughs> these will sell these will probably sell for about 25 each so black and white let me cover his butt <laughs> so, there's a lot of artsy you know artsy this one's not too bad a lot of artsy type stuff that one's not bad at all and celebrities are in here so interesting magazines all right you guys that was a great haul i love this lamp i don't care if someone buys it or not right okay so this was a thrift haul as you guys know i do different kinds of videos for reselling i do the thrift with me if you want to go to the thrift see me live at the thrift store i do the thrift haul where we look at things more closely because some people get a little dizzy with the thrift with me videos that some of us do although i try to keep it like really slow I do what sold I'm way past due to do one of those and I do like various selling tools tips and tricks when I'm in the mood um, and when I see like a lot of people asking for it okay I will talk to you later or see you on one of your videos <laughs> have a great day